Today on our 2017 Ram 1500, you're going to be taking a look at, I'm going to show you how to install the B&W Custom Underbed Installation Kit for B&W Companion 5th Wheel Trailer Hitches. Part number BWG NRK 1309-5W. This 5th Wheel Installation Kit is designed to let you install your B&W Companion 5th Wheel Trailer Hitches. The adapters are part number BWR VK 3500 or part number BWR VK3400. The underbed design of this kit allows for full bed access and when you are ready it's under five minutes to convert your empty truck bed into a fifth wheel hitch. We'll start off by unlocking our BMW hitch and installing our fifth wheel adapter. We have ours pre-assembled but you can adjust the uprights here depending on your truck and trailer combination. At this point the hitch is ready to attach to your trailer. There's a little clip here that you release, basically it's a safety pin. Then you swing the handle out and you can watch the jaws open. Now you're ready to back onto your trailer. Once you're secure on your trailer, you can reinstall the clip. And since this fifth wheel installation kit doubles as a gooseneck hitch, when you're not towing your fifth wheel, you can remove it. This frees up the hole to reinsert the hitch ball when you need it. Now we'll go ahead and show you how to install a custom underbed kit for the B&W Companion fifth wheel trailer hitches. This hitch is not going to require any welding or drilling. It's going to come with all the necessary hardware to get it installed, and it's going to have a nice gray powder coat finish to resist any rust or corrosion. You're going to have a single spring-loaded safety pin, and your U-bolts for your safety chain hookups in the bed of your truck are also going to be spring-loaded. That's going to help when not in use to keep them nice and close down inside the corrugation. You can see our safety chain U-bolts fit nicely in the lower corrugation and our center section doesn't come up any higher than the raised corrugation. That's giving us total bed access. Now what's nice about this hitch is instead of having the pin release lever on the side in the fender well, it's actually in the bed of the truck. It's going to come with this little tool right here. You simply put it in and turn it to release it. First thing we need to do to start our installation is we need to measure for our hole in the bed of our truck. You need to make sure you follow the instructions for the bed size that you have. Also keep in mind if you have a bed liner, plastic bed liner, you can either take it out or you're going to have to cut that section out of there. If you have a spray in bed liner, depending on how thick it is, you're going to need to take into account and add that onto the measurement. So we'll measure from the back edge of our bed, make sure you don't go from the tailgate, to our measurement and the instructions. We'll just put a small dot and then what we need to do is we're going to go in between our wheel wells and center that. We'll see next thing we want to do, so we're going to drill a small pilot hole and you can use any size small drill bit to, for the pilot hole. We're going to move up to a four inch hole saw bit. Now you can run this straight down on the bed if you want. Uh, one thing that we found that helps, is we took a piece of plywood, put a four inch hole in it. This is going to help keep your blade from kicking around. Just a good clean cut. All we have to do is clean up our shavings. Now we're going to take a file and we're just going to go around the hole and knock off the burr. And what I suggest, because we have open metal, you take some spray paint and you use the uh, same color as the bed or a clear coat and cover up that bare metal to prevent any rusting down the road. Our pin release handle is going to come in through the bed right here on the top. So what we need to do is we need to measure for that and we need to follow directions precisely. So our hole is going to be in this area so I'm going to start in this lower corrugation. We're going to measure per the instructions per our bed size. And what I need to do is I'm going to measure from the center this way, four and three quarters. 
and then from the center this way, two and three quarters. So you can see our two and three quarters is here, center line. Next, we're going to take a three quarter inch hole saw, unless you have a drill bit as three quarter inch, and we're going to drill out the hole there. And we're just going to do the same process that we did with this hole. Go ahead and clean up our shavings. Make sure we get any burrs off, and then we'll paint that bare metal. Next thing we need to do is we need to remove our wheel wall liners. It's not necessary. However, it will make it a little bit easier when putting the uh, cross members on the frame of the truck. So we'll go ahead and start with an eight millimeter socket. We're gonna have some eight millimeter bolts that we need to remove. And then you're gonna have two on the inside wall. Then we're gonna have one underneath if you have this uh, trim panel on, you're going to have one here. We'll just start slowly pulling out our edge like this. Just like that. And we'll just leave it sit right on top of the, the wheel for now. And we're going to do that same thing to the other side. Next, we're going to take one of our bolts. We want to be able to hand thread this in. Sometimes when they put the powder coat on these, it gets down in those threads, and uh, we wanna make sure that that's clean so we don't get a cross thread issue. Next, we're gonna take a panel tool like this, or you can use a flathead screwdriver, and you see how this wire, now we're on the driver's side, this wire that runs up on top of the frame, our cross members, one of them has to fit here, and the other one fits in front. So we're gonna need to remove this, the fastener, so we can move this out of the way. So we'll have one here on the outside of the frame. Again, we're on the driver's side. Let's pop that off. And then we're gonna have one right up here. Once you get your wiring unclipped and loosened up, you see that air tube right there? That's also gonna have to be removed. So this air tube, you can see it's just a slide clip. You just slide it off. We'll let that hang. And you know, this cross member here, that tube actually runs right on the inside of it. We want to go ahead and remove that from there also. We'll just let this hang for now. So our wiring that ran across our driver's side frame rail runs right across this cross member here. What we want is it's fastened by little plastic clips that just sit right in the top of this cross member. We want to pull those up. We want our wiring to sit in this gap to make sure that it's not going to get pinched when we put our cross piece in for our hitch. So we'll just pull these out the same way. Pull them down in there like that. Next, we're going to put this rear cross member in for our hitch. And you can see it's got a notch in it. What we want is we want it to sit like this, the notch facing the back of the vehicle. Where we're going to put it in is on our passenger side. We'll go ahead and pull off our liner and we'll set that aside. You see where our spring is? We want this hole right here on our frame. So again, we want the notch to the back. We're just going to slide it in like this. Next, we're going to take the crossbeam for our hitch. And our wiring that we took off, that notch, the wiring is actually going to run through there. So when we get it back, we're going to slide it over top of this cross member, and then we're going to flip it where the notch is facing down and the wiring is running through it. Maybe a little bit hard to see. I'm going to rotate it up. You can see here where our wiring, our wiring is running through that notch, and this cross piece is sitting on the cross member for the frame of the vehicle. We'll just slide it all the way back. We're just going to leave it sit like that for now. Next, we're going to install our front cross member. As you can see, it's a piece of angled steel. One side's got holes in it. What we're going to do is we want the V to face down, holes towards the back of the truck. We're going to go right up between our suspension and our shot. Feed up just like that. 
we want to go up top of our driver's side frame rail and then span it to our passenger side just like that push it back and then rotate it up next we're going to put in our center section before we do that I want to point out something because it might be kind of hard to see once we're in there once we get it up there we're going to put hardware in to attach it to the back cross member that we previously installed you can see there's five holes here we're only going to be putting it in the two end holes in this very center one. When we put it up, you can see the distance from this hole to the edge is shorter on one side. This is going to be towards the front of the vehicle. We're going to be using a half inch by two and a quarter inch long hex bolt with a lock washer and then a flat washer on top like this. So I'll go ahead and set three of them up like that. Now we'll get our center section in place. Now because of our exhaust, the way it is, we're going to take the head or the center section. We're going to flip it like this. We're going to slide it in over top of our exhaust this way. It's toward the front of the vehicle. Then we're going to take this edge and slide it up and over like that. Now what we want to do is we want to get it lined up with our hole that we have cut in the bed of the truck. Next thing we need to do is come up to the bed of our truck and we need to pull our center section up. So if you don't have a lifting device, which most people may not have like a hoist for motor or something like that, what you can do is grab a few blocks of wood. Uh, you just want to make sure it's going to be higher than uh, the bed of the truck here where your strap's going to be going. So let me show you how I'm going to do it if you're by yourself. Both hooks, you're going to hook them right onto the pin. We're going to take just a 2x4, run it across like this, pull it up tight. Now it's holding it in place, you can go down, put your hardware in place, just like that. Next we'll take our 2 and a quarter inch bolt. You want to make sure that the head is facing toward the rear of the truck. We'll slide it through like that. And then we're going to put it on our flat washer, our lock washer, and then our nut. We're just going to hand tighten for now. For our instruction, it says to only install the two center bolts from our center section into our front cross member. You see this plate right here that goes to our hitch pin. This bolt will not slide in. So now, since we have a bolt in here, we have it attached to the back, we're going to go up top, we're going to loosen that so we can slide that pin out to move this plate to get our bolt in place. Now you can see our hitch is staying in place now that we've removed our strap and removed our boards. Now what we need to do is we need to slide our pin over so we can get our other hardware. Slide it out like that. Now go underneath and get this bolt installed. Again, we're only hand tightening these for now. That's your new U-bolt. And now we're going to install these. And you have your coil spring here. We want to go in front of it, but we want to stay inside the cup. We're going to take our U-bolt. There we go. Take our U-bolt. You want to stay inside the cup. We're going to go in front of the spring. We're going to put it right around our frame rail. Next, we're going to install our passenger side inside side plate. So you look how it's kind of a weird angle. You got two holes here and you got two holes here. This is actually going to be installed like this inside the frame rail. The U-bolt that we put in is going to go through these two holes. These two holes are going to line up with our center section and cross members. So what we'll do is we'll take our U-bolt, we're going to slide it out to where the ends of the threaded part of the bolt is even with the inside edge of the frame, we'll slide this into place and then slide our U-bolt into this. Slide our U-bolt out like this. Slide the center section. this piece up. Line up our holes and slide our U-bolt into place. We'll secure it into place with a lock washer and then a nut. Our driver's side, we're going to have two plates like this. These are actually going to be combined. 
This one's gonna go in first, then this one's gonna go on top. Essentially, when we're done, they're gonna sit like this. Because we have airlines, fuel lines, and everything else over there, that's why these are cut out like this. So, let's get our first one in place. Get my U-bolt slid back. And to kind of maneuver this, so that I can get it up against my hitch. I'm gonna line up our U-bolt. Just like that. We're just gonna set it there for now. Slide this up. And we'll use the same combination of hardware. Lock washer and then a nut. Next we're gonna take two of our one and a half inch hex bolts and we're gonna secure our two side plates together. We'll slide one of these two holes. On the other side we'll put a lock washer and a nut. Now, if you can see here, I have the head of the bolt toward the center of the vehicle or towards the front of the vehicle. And we're putting the nut on the outside, nut and lock washer. We'll just hand tighten for now. Next, we're gonna take one of our two and a quarter inch bolts. We're gonna put on a flat washer. We're gonna feed it from the inside of our center section and then we're out through our side bracket. Once we get it through, We'll put on a flat washer, a lock washer, and a nut. Then we'll do that same thing with the other side. Now we'll take another one of our one and a half inch bolts. We're gonna come from the inside. It's gonna go in the outside hole. And you're gonna do that same thing on the other side. So we have one more to put in, and it's right behind these hard lines up in here. I can't get my hand up in there to get the bolt in. So what I did is I took a piece of tape and I just taped a skinny screwdriver around the head of the bolt just to hold it on there enough till I get the nut and bolt on the other side. And then I can pull the screwdriver and tape off. And then we'll use the same combination here. Next we're gonna install, we're gonna have a bolt and a plate. We'll have two of them. And they're gonna go, one's gonna go here, one's gonna go here. You're gonna have to maneuver these around a little bit to get them in there, but they will go. There's an open section right up in here. This hole inside is open. So we take it and slide it in, kinda slide the end of the bolt up in there, just kinda rotate it around until you get it to fall through. This one, I think I'm gonna wait. I'll keep it out for now. Just set it in there. You notice our dual exhaust. We're gonna have a bracket we had to put in here. Looks like this. Now in the instructions they tell you maybe easier to take down the exhaust on the one side there. I'm gonna try to do it without it. I'm gonna slide this. We want our three. You can see there's uh, three tabs. We want them facing down. These are gonna go up to the inside of our hitch, our center section. So we're gonna kinda slide this up in here like this. So I'll get my two one and a half inch bolts and I'll attach this to the inside of the center section first. That'll hold it in place. Now we can rotate our bolt and plate into place there. And we'll have a large flange nut for each one. So what I determined is my nut is not going to fit up in there and I can't move this anywhere with my exhaust pipe. So I'm gonna have to move this in order to torque this bolt down. So I'm gonna pull this hanger, pull it off of this hanger and then pull it off the most rear hanger. That should give me enough room to move it so I can get a socket on it. I'm gonna spray just a little bit of silicone spray, just something to help them slide off a little bit easier. We'll take our crowbar. We're gonna wedge it right up in between them like this. You're gonna kinda push up on one and down on the other. And it's actually gonna catch the lip to give you enough to pop that off. Just like that. As far as this front hanger, it's just two long pins. You can just take the bottom with your hand and just push it off. It comes off pretty easy. Now that we have all of our hardware installed, 
we're gonna go ahead and tighten and torque all of it. We're gonna start with our two flange nuts in the back. And we're gonna torque those with the specifications and the instructions. And we're using a 15 16 socket to do that. Next, we're gonna tighten our center section to our rear cross member. We'll be using a 19 millimeter socket. And repeat that for all remaining hardware, attaching our center section to our cross member. Next, we're going to tighten and torque our center section to our front cross member. Next, we're going to torque our U bolts. And what you want to do here is not just tighten one end, we're going to alternate. So we'll do five or six turns on one side, and then we'll go to the other end. Once you get one side done, you're going to do the same thing to the U-bolt on the other side. Next, we're going to tighten our two side plates together and then pull them to the specifications. This is one with the nut and the bolt. So, you may need to use a wrench on the other side if the head of the bolt is spinning. Now we need to drill out for our safety chains. It's going to be advisable to get a long drill bit. Over on the driver's side, there's quite a few things that are in the way and you're not gonna be able to get a drill up in there. We're gonna take a hole punch and we're gonna mark the center of each one. And we're gonna take just a small, long drill bit. We wanna get our hole started from down here first. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to the bed of the truck and I'm gonna drill them out the rest of the way. Now, for the instructions, you're gonna be drilled out to a half inch. If you have a half inch drill bit, you can use it uh, to drill these out the rest of the way. Keep in mind, when you're coming up from the bottom, the hole may not be exactly centered. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a step bit to do it. That's what we want. We want them to move freely. So once we're done doing the other side, we'll go ahead and clean them off with a small file, and then we'll spray them down with some black paint to cover up the bare metal. We'll go ahead and drop our U-bolts into our holes. You're gonna take your Christmas tree-like spring. You want this wide end going up towards the bottom of the bed. Like that, we'll go over our U-bolt, and then we'll add on our nut. And we'll do the same thing with this one here. And then we'll tighten them down just where the U-bolt is flush with the bottom of the nut. 19 millimeter socket. And we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. So now we need to reinstall our air tube here. Again, these clips are just popping clips. So I'm going to put one here. We're going to relocate it onto this cross member. Do something like this. You just want to make sure, keep in mind, that your axle moves. So you want to have enough so that it doesn't pull it apart. Once you have your airline installed, reinstall your exhaust, your spare tire, your fender liners, and then you're ready to go. That'll do it for a look at an installation on the BMW Custom Underbed Installation Kit for BMW Companion 5th Wheel Trailer Hitches, part number BWG NRK 1309-5W on our 2017 Ram 1500.